Uh, they're going up against C1K, also known as Call of Karma here again. Both these teams, 2-3 and three record here in Group C, so not not bad, obviously. It's not like they, they've done bad by any means. Just again, only two teams of the eight teams going to be moving on. Now, on that note, uh, with the result that actually happened earlier today, TT Esports took on Team GA, and uh, TT Esports defeated Team GA two games to nothing, so that 100% confirmed the two teams that are going to be moving on here out of Group C, and I believe it's the first group to be absolutely 100% confirmed. We have Vitriolic and TT Esports. No matter what happens this game and the, rem the remaining next game, they are both going to be moving on. So uh, that's where the standings uh, stand here for Group C, and you know which teams are moving on. So good uh, props to those teams, and of course, you know, can't say it's uh, th that big of a surprise, but it wasn't an easy road that maybe even some people put out there. They definitely had their challenges throughout it, but... Of course, both Vitriolic and TT Esports are going to be moving on. But here we are with this game in front of us, Trelf. We've got the blind bands happening. Pebbles and Plague Rider. Blind band by the Legion team. And we've got Tundra and Ophelia taken care of by C1K. Yeah, um, I'm, this is kind of interesting. I've never seen a blind band Plague Rider before. Um, maybe the super, You know, it's going to kind of be funny, too, to watch, see what the super beta testers value as opposed to the rest of the community because, yeah. obviously, they work a lot more in the balance scheme of things. Um, so, you know, maybe they value Plague Rider's deniability as a suicide to be very, very strong, and they don't want to deal with it. Tundra Ophelia coming out from Hellborn, that's pretty standard and obvious. And uh, look at that, a first pick scout, it's like we're casting TD Esports or something. <laughs> and then uh, the Jellyfish has followed up with a lock on Andromeda and Glacius. So um, those ones are pretty standard. I love Andromeda. She's not the greatest support in the lane, per se. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't have a lot of range to her, um, and, and she's, you know, very, very squishy. But... She offers a lot as probably the best support hero in the late game. Yeah. And uh, I really, really love her for that. And then uh, Cthulhu Font, uh, they're locked from Super Beta Testers. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, a, bring point, that's a great point to bring up there. <laughs> Uh, if a I'm break over point. the break point, you know, break I don't point. know what I'm trying to say, but no, great point to bring up there, and I've definitely said this in the past as well. You know, Andromeda, she's one of those support heroes that every single one of her abilities, when you think about it, it just scales from the early game to the late game. I mean, it just it's a very, very effective hero. Literally every single ability, the Aurora, the Dimensional Link, the Comma Stun, and then, of course, the Swap ability uh, with the Void Rift, I think it's called uh, Void Rift, yeah. Um, it's always useful throughout the whole game. So, and not every hero, especially support hero, can say that. Every single one of their abilities is always useful uh, throughout the whole game. So, seeing her locked, you got the glitch you mentioned, cut through the fire, and then keep her the forest, and then it's finished off with bubbles. So, a strange start here, I mean, definitely to the <laughs> to this game with the, the Legion team, of course, in co-op, go ahead and locking Scout, but. Other than that, nothing too crazy coming out here in the lock pool. Although, you know, I will say, you know, Cthulhu Funk, Keep of the Force, Andromeda, even. I mean, not heroes that we do see locked all the time at the same time. So, going to be interesting to see how this game plays out. But you, you were talking about, you know, looking forward to seeing if we have those great picks. We are in the banning phase now. we got Tempest so far. Uh, but we'll see if uh, one of these uh, fun picks come out eventually. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised to also see a, uh, a Parasite ban. It seems... Oh, <laughs> Trout, <laughs> Trout, you... This God is, damn, I'm good. Mastery over here, but uh, well, I have nothing else to say, Breaky. Sorry, I'm out of words now. <laughs> All right, you go ahead, take yeah, over. I, I think Jerizai is gonna. Oh, look at that, Jerizai. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I didn't do that right though. I did it after. That didn't work. Jerizai been after that. No, uh, Parasite. By the way, he got a new skin today, I believe. Uh, but actually, it was one of the. It's a new. Uh, what's that thing that they got? The set. De set de de de. The seven deadly sins uh, is starting today. With uh, see, I think Parasite was the first avatar for that. He so. got it, but I don't see and an he, option to pick it. And that happens. I don't know why. Yeah, I think as a spectator, it's a little bit screwed up as far as being able to see every single avatar. So, um, but. We're not going to see this game, you know, maybe in the future we'll get a chance to... I have seen it myself, actually, again. If you're a super beta tester, you'd have already seen it by now, so I'm just saying, <laughs> for those that are out there. Um, but well, as far as finishing off, Jerzy, more access, Mage Bane, and Polywog Priest. So nothing too crazy, cool. but look at that. <laughs> oh, SPT team knows how powerful Draconis is. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead with the first pick on him. Yeah, they do. I mean, there is Silhouette and uh, Dark Lady available. If I'm, C1, if I'm Call It Karma, I'm definitely looking at that uh, Dark Lady in particular. Um, but there's a lot of good support heroes available, and uh, I don't really think that they should be too hasty to pick them up. So I like Draconis as that first pick. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong hero. We all know how much it farms, and I think it's probably one of those cases of Super Beta Testers being like, we told you so, and because, yeah. you know, they, they see things first, so to speak. And now Silhouette uh, Engineer is picked up. Kind of interesting with the Engineer pickup, but I like him. Um, he's very, very strong. That Purge ability be could be good against Draconis' W spell. That yeah. gives him that, um, that extra movement speed. So, uh, yeah, I think those are fine picks, but um, as long as they have a points done as well. I, I stress that a lot, but it really is important. Um, you know, Engineer Kegstun is great and all, but it's very easy to juke. 
you can dodge it. Silhouette's uh, Tree Grapple, it it's dodgeable. But things like an Andromeda stun, if they were able to pick Andromeda, can't get away from that. Yeah. Well, you can if you have the perfect heroes, but, um, well, the right heroes, I should say. So I like those picks. Yeah, having that gotcha potential on C1K against a hero like Draconis is going to be very, very powerful. Because Draconis is a, is a fairly squishy hero. I mean, obviously, she's, he's very glass cannon now. Yeah, not in that we do talk about that we have seen and we haven't seen too often just yet, surprisingly enough. But um, Shrunken Head is a very popular, you know, first item even on him after you finish the boots. But, you know, being able to jump in before you can get that Shrunken Head activated, having that jump in gotcha potential, as I call it, uh, is very, very powerful. And so far, they don't necessarily have it. You can say with the Portuguese silhouette, perhaps, but there you go with that point stun. As you like to stress, Trav Hammerstorm can definitely fit that role very well. Uh, so a pretty strong finish there for C1K, if I say so myself. Aluna Dented Shaman, though, uh, to go for Quap over there. So we'll see if we get some DS solo play, whether or not we see that here. Yeah, uh, I hope so. I, I really regard Demented Shaman's solo as very, very strong. Uh, and I, I've said this about 50 times, but him as a support player or support hero, it's okay. Actually, they do go with the Cthulhu font, so we might see that Desham Cthulhu font lane, which is actually very, very strong. Um, you don't even really need a tri lane with it. It's just strong in its own regard. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's fine. Uh, maybe do like an Aluna plus... Well, it could be Aluna Draconis, or they could do Aluna maybe Scout. I think Scout is pretty much the hero to pick right mm -hmm. here. Andromeda Bubbles are going to be the final two picks over here for C1K. So they, they finish off very strong. We talk about Andromeda, you were mentioning as soon as you got locked, but also great synergy with a hero like Silhouette, especially right. a lot of amp damage that's going to be coming out from her. So, yeah, uh, uh, very good lineup, actually, when you really look at the whole picture. I mean, I think their lane's going to be very powerful. Now, actually, well, how they're going to lane, I wonder if it is going to be a 2 2 1 and sort of try lane set up with either, you know, maybe like the Hammerstorm or even the Silhouette solo, but. Uh, we'll see how they decide to go, but you're talking about the final pick here, and it is going to be Keeper of the Forest, actually, with the final pick. So that very likely means we're going to see an Aluna solo with Dracona solo and then Cthulhu Font to be DS lane. I mean, yeah. are those the most powerful solos, though, is a question. Well, here's the problem is, and I've talked about this a little bit, when you pick Keeper of the Forest like that, you cannot really man up and go long lane. Yeah. Like, you can't, you can't maybe dual lane long lane because if they have a tri lane or a stronger dual lane, to match you up, they're going to beat you, and you're and you're going to be screwed the entire game. The only problem here with these these lanes is like, you can't really send a suicide or one solo hero top. Uh, it's very very iffy. It's very very scary. So they either they're going to have to either man up and do DS to the font top and hope it wins and hope they don't face a tri lane because if they do, there's they they cannot move around. There's yeah. nothing. Keeper of the forest cannot provide assistance at level two, three, or four, or whatever. Yeah. So um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't really like the keeper pickup, and I especially don't like the Cthulhu pickup when there was something like a bubbles in the pool to first pick out of that lock pool. So mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see if they can make it work. Yeah. The well, again, this is uh, the Quap team that, especially WCA, uh, as we we're talking about earlier, he's been uh, giving them a lot of praise here as far as uh, going into this tournament. So this is the first time we finally get to cover them. Happened to be uh, well, earlier on in the event. Of course, I didn't really get a chance to cover them. We had other great matchups as well. But here we are covering them. Unfortunately, again, it's at a point where both teams, at the both C1K and Co-op, are technically out of it here in Group C. But hey, you know that's uh, it's great to see. At least we talked about this earlier. It's great to see teams at least finishing the group play. You know, because they could easily, which as as dick as that would be, frankly, you know, just to say, well, we don't get a qualifier. We're not going to keep playing. I mean. Obviously, both these teams just say, you know, we're going to man up, get, have the fun. It is a game, after all. Let's yeah. have some fun with it and see what we can make happen. Now, look at this. The, what is going on here <laughs> from SBT? We got, are we going to see a laning keeper? I think so. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I think I brought this up the other day, actually, just out of complete randomness. I was actually thinking we are going to see it, but a laning keeper. Silhouette maybe in a little bit of trouble. She's going to be fine, though, but what do you make of this, Trav? Um, it, it, it's fine. I mean, they, they predicted the suicide bubbles, and that being said, there's a lot of things that can that can beat him quite easily. Now, I will say one thing. A keeper does have a, a hatchet, so he's going to be last hitting fine. Uh, th this is a minor thing I noticed, but he actually wasted a bit of gold there. He had, I think, if, if not two, or if not three, at least two clarity potions on him, hmm. and then sold them too late, so he lost Ooh. gold. Because I was watching his gold, he had 98, and so I knew at least he had two clarities because they're 50 each mm -hmm. and he kept selling them back and then selling a, a one minor totem so he actually wasted a little bit of gold there not the biggest deal in the world but uh it certainly adds yeah. up a little bit when you're when you're you know 1v1 against the bubbles because bubbles can can harass you out i mean if bubbles plays this correctly he actually could win this lane quite easily um but uh yeah because keeper does not have a uh a shield 
So that, that that's gonna be an interesting lane to, to watch. Now, granted, Keeper should pretty much get every single CS, but if Bubbles is doing it right, he's gonna just harass him a lot. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Keeper of the Force with that Q ability in the Nature's Veil, having that extra armor in the regen, very, very powerful. I mean, I, 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 st I actually remember going on the old Keeper of the Force before he even had the minions and whatnot, just being able to go solo mid with him and actually be pretty powerful because of the armor ability. Uh, with the region and everything. But yeah, so he has that first hit. Very intrigued to see how casual is here playing for the Quap team and how he goes. He is going to go the Ent Moot ability uh, with his second level. So staying away from the trees at least here early on. Uh, what makes me wonder. I mean, that it's interesting because, you know, that... You, oh, top lane. Actually, we have a lot of action picking up. Tree Grapple going to be used by Silhouette. Barely getting away at the last second. But you see the power of Demented Shaman through the bottom right there. You can imagine what happened. I guess you should say, unfortunately, I didn't catch it on camera, the actually fighting part of it. But, uh, yeah, the charge in front of the Fawn sets up the Creep Wave push, and all of a sudden the Healing Wave comes out, and a lot of damage happens. So Silhouette does escape, though, so no blood skill happening just yet, but very, very close right there. But, yeah, I mean, Keeper of the Force not going to be that mass pusher now. I mean, he's how, how do you expect Keeper to build as a result of this? Is it going to be more of a hard-hitting carry even, a semi-carry? Um, oh, Keeper? Yeah. I have no idea. I, I imagine he'll still kind of build the same way. Something like an Astrolabe and Bulwark. Mm -hmm. um, although the Bulwark could be built on uh, Cthulhu as well. And in fact, I know uh, Uncle Chicken. I've been, I played a little bit with him. And uh, I don't think he actually likes getting Home of the Black Legion on Cthulhu. He likes getting the Sanitarius and the, and, uh, and the Soul's Bulwark. So, and he just skips uh, Home of the Black Legion. I don't know if that's what he's going to do this game, but I've seen him do that in the past. Um, but yeah, Tree, I, I imagine he'll still go standard items, but it would be really fun to see him do something different. Uh, a long time ago, Keeper was played somewhat as a carry sometimes, yeah. and would go uh, Steam Boots, Shield Breaker, yeah. and it was fun to watch. <laughs> Elder Parasite, you know, you can hit it hit like a freaking trick. I know Fae V actually does a very memorable game that he had, uh, it stands out to me as a... Uh, being a keep of the force uh, carry play, which is pretty awesome to watch. But we see in the middle a nice hammer storm sound right on top of the keg. In comes that turret, and a bloodlust kill can happen on top of a Luna. Very good coordination right there between the jellyfish and Kalbergs for Call It Karma. It was an invisible engineer, so obviously that helped big time. But both Draconis and Aluda were standing right on top of each other, and that hammer storm stun could not have been any more perfect for them. Yeah, good bloodless kill there. The invis runes definitely helped out with that. Um, I was just going to say that actually they. I mean, they are still losing this lane, if I'm not, like, mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, Hammerstorm has, well, so Hammerstorm has 7 CS, but Draconis has 8. Um, th that Invis room, which is unfortunate, it's going to help him out a bit, but Aluna, Draconis. Oh, actually, some action coming up. The uh, the stun as well as the turret, putting a lot of damage on Draconis. I think he will be fine, though. He has that flight, but he might not be fine. Some damage coming out. Uphill misses are playing a role in that, um, unfortunately, though, for Engineer. So uh, he will end up being fine. He pops a health potion taken. Actually, uh, now the health potion and clarity potion popped by Engineer. So it uh, kind of resets things here in the middle. Meanwhile, at the top lane, Demented Shaman may try to turn this around, though. Does have a healing wave in one second. This is a return around kill. Silhouette's in a lot of trouble now. And Silhouette will fall. That's what I was waiting for. That is the power, again, of Demented Shaman as a hero. That turnaround potential. If you have another hero near you or the creep wave, they're going to chase Andromeda. They're going to kill Andromeda. Jeez. Double tap coming out for Uncle Chicken right there. Playing the Cthulhu Vaughn. Very good turnaround coming out for Quap at the top side. Again, Dimension Shaman with that healing wave. You gotta keep you gotta be careful about that. It just sucks for Silhouette to happen with one second left, and all of a sudden she got turned on. Yeah, I mean that's just a really hard lane to deal with. I didn't get I didn't catch the very beginning of it, so I didn't see how they set up this uh the kind of fight over there. But um yeah, the mid lane, Draconis, Aluna, I, I really feel like it's gonna dominate. Uh now they are kind of having some good combos with the Engineer and the Hammerstorm, but I really feel like they, they could just tr crush this tri if they sent one other hero from mid. Um, but they are just going to abandon it. That's the other option I was going to get to. They could just abandon that lane, have Andromeda roam, and that's that's what they're doing. So one of those op one of the two options is great, and they're, they're choosing one. They're not sticking with I mean, with. Silhouette, though, she is, uh, she's struggling up here. She she, obviously, after that death, it's really putting her behind. Now, look at the creep scores of everyone in this game. It, it, look at Keeper of the Forest is dominating in creep kills, 24 and 8. No one else in this game, other than his team or the other, is even close to that as far as uh, only being five minutes into the game. So Keeper of the Forest, man, he is a hard hitter. So I don't know. I guess it's not like that surprising by any means, but he's having a very good time down here at the bottom lane. So we'll keep an eye on that see, again, how he builds and what he's able to do with that farm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he has that hatchet, it's, and he has high... high um, base damage so it's very very easy to get last hits so once once it gets to this stage where like both heroes are level five six in this lane 
and they haven't killed each other, the Keeper of the Forks is just going to just do fine. Mm -hmm. uh, Bubbles, like I said, he has potential and, and actually really should do well in the lane. He has to massively, massively harass at like level 1, 2, 3. Um, but it, then again, it, it's still hard because Keeper actually bought a lot of regen to start. So, Oh, we see Andromeda going to get charged on. There's the healing wave again just with him and Cthulhu fought so much damage. And Andromeda had no chance right there. Silhouette, she did use her tree grapple. Thankful for her that Cthulhu fought doesn't have enough mana. But another stuff, she's going back in right here. She's going to try to turn this around. Oh my gosh, I mean, maybe she wouldn't have been able to get away, but I don't, uh, I, I guess I could see that. She figured she was dead anyway, so went for a kill, but man, at the bottom lane, Keeper of the Force takes out Bubbles. You see the kill field was used, but so was the root, I'm guessing, from Keeper of the Force. Yes, it was, and gets the kill on the Bubbles instead, so things looking up and up here for Quap now. Yeah, Keeper really dominating bottom, and I, I think it was like a completed a Ring of Sorcery there. So yeah, still going those kind of standard items. Even though he, he is being played as a solo here, he can still be very, very good in team fights and pushing. Has a lot of pushing power. And actually, he has leveled up Animate Forest uh, three times, but I don't even think he's used it once. Just mainly been using that Nature's Veil for the extra regen and armor. Um, so yeah, good job there by uh, Casualist playing that Keeper. Yeah, this, it's, uh, it's uh, again, obviously watching the top side, but Keeper of the Forest, man, this, this is a case of, you know, we talk about this all the time. Dementia Chama Witch are perfect examples, you know, going back to tortures, where it's just like, you're used to seeing, especially Dementia Chama Witch are more so, you used to see this more, more support role, at least in the TMM mind sense, or like the pub mind sense, it's like, those are support heroes, play them as support, but... They, they can be played as very powerful solo heroes, especially DS of Witch Slayer, as we've talked about. Aluna, in the meantime, in the middle lane. Oh, oh what a wow. destroy right there with the Deja Vu! There comes Emerald Lightning Stun. It's not going to be enough in the end. Wasted but Repugnance time. right there nearly got away. However, at the top side, we do see another kill on the Silhouette as Cthulhu Fall and Dimension Shaman are falling back. Big tower dive, though, it looked like happened as the Obliterate was also used by Cthulhu Fawn, but they fall back before too much damage comes out. Oh, you see the Healing Wave once again, Engineer in a lot of trouble. Out comes the Comet from Andromeda, though, but now Andromeda needs to be careful as Cthulhu Fawn, not enough mana for a charge, but it might not matter. Dementia Chama coming in and Tangle hits, and that should do it right there. One more auto attack, there we go. Can Cthulhu Fawn get away? He has played at Greaves as well, the Helm of the Victim. Honestly, I think he's fine, as, ooh, the Death Lotus Snipe not going to be enough, and Dimension Shaman will also fall back. This lane up top here, all three lane, well, I guess especially the top and the bottom are just doing so well for the Co-op team now. Yeah, definitely really well played there by both DS and Cthulhu. Um, I really like DS's uh, skill build as well. I don't think there's any reason to get unbreakable in DS Cthulhu font lane because it is so very aggressive. Uh, so really got good job there. Uh, I also love plated Greaves as boots in general. People also forget that they give you um, they give you more movement speed than mm -hmm. something like Snee Boots. Uh, so I, it's 70 movement speed to 60 on, on uh, the steam boots. And he's actually moving, like I was looking, I was like, what, why, why is his movement speed so high? But it, it's just that minor extra movement speed boost that you do get from Plate of Greaves. Yeah, and um, of course his third ability too. Right, slowing them makes, down. It, makes him look like he's walking faster. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, the root at the bottom lane. Alme is in a lot of trouble. Gonna try to port out. Yes, it is gonna happen in time. So not enough damage coming out for Keeper the Force right there, but <laughs> Bubbles. Forest to pour it out and not gonna have to use some regen while keeping the forest will push in this bottom lane and we'll see how our Hellborn team reacts to this. And I mean, again, this isn't obviously the keeper of the forest, that's the odd thing. Uh, but other than that, it's nothing too crazy being done over here by Quap side. It's just they're just playing the better game right now. You see at the top lane once again, silhouette in so much trouble. The final auto attack. Myself. Uncle Chicken is 6 0 and 1. Man, he is just having such a good time here at this top lane, and I, I, I don't know. I mean, the Hellborn team, they have Hammerstorm doing very well, but other than that, it just drops off pretty harshly. Andromeda is going to get caught here, and Andromeda will fall too. It seems like they're just going in one by one almost. Now they're going to go for Dimension Shaman. Hammerstorm hits the stun. The turret on top of that. Does he have a heal? No, can't get it off in time. See the Bruce take from Hammerstorm, just too powerful. Going to stand his ground, however, and actually Cthulhu Fawn is going to try to run away. He does have a charge coming up right here. Is it going to be enough for the kill? Yes, it is. It gets that kill engineer. Not going to be able to finish him off with his auto attack. Just too tanky, unless he hits a keg stun right here, but not enough mana. So Cthulhu Fawn will still be alive. Wow, this is just hard carrying Cthulhu Fawn here. He's really tanky. I mean, he's got 16 armor already. Yeah. Almost 17. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure and I'm, that I'm right and that he's actually going to go for that Insanitarius first. And then and then change that into or then build up a uh, Souls Bulwark right after that. Mm -hmm. So um, you know I talked about the Souls Bulwark maybe still being an option on C Keeper, but I actually really think that Uncle Chicken there on uh, Cthulhu Font's going to pick one up. So Keeper will probably go for that Astrally, but then again, uh, D Shom is actually farming really well as well, doing so well in that lane that he is, 210 gold per minute, um, and he actually has opted out to level his um, his.
his Stormcloud there. He does not have his ultimate. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's just going to go that mass heal, which is, you know, again, synergizes so well with Clifont. So if he's constantly staying up here, and, and he is, he, they're both up top still again, um, they're going to have both pu pushing power and a lot of ganking potential. So Now how about this? As uh, you see Cooper the Force, he is roaming towards the middle lane. He's level 9 right here, spawning his minions, which is level 4 now with the anime forest. And going to push in the middle lane with Dementia, or Luna, excuse me. How about this, though? We have a Draconis in this game. Yet so far, we're now at 10 and a half for nearly 11 minutes in. Cthulhu Font and Keeper of the Forest are farming quite better than this Draconis here. Draconis getting so much praise these last couple of weeks, really, as being just one of the best farmers in the game and so much GPM, but um, not, not doing so well this time around. However, for the Legion team, actually, good coordination right here from Colin Karma. They're going to get a pick onto a Luna. Now, Keeper of the Forest will root very defensively, though. Now, he is going to chase Silhouette. Now, go Juke around, going to use his Q. And he'll be more than fine. You see the Hellborn team, they're not prepared for this. No dust or revs or anything. So uh, he's going to be fine. The top tower going down in the meantime. And Keeper the Force is going to start roaming through the jungle, going into his home right there. So, but yeah, Draconis not doing so well this game as far as farm for him. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I, I mean, I really think, uh, well, he does have 56 CS, so it's, it's decent. Um, that Aluna Draconis lane actually didn't do as well as I thought they would. Uh, but we did see a lot of good coordination, and that, and that Invis rune definitely helped out between the uh, Engineer and the Hammerstorm. Actually, and, uh, Andromeda will be picked off here by the Cthulhu Font and DS combination. Um, and then they're trying to pursue something, but Bubbles uses that Shell Surf. Keeper of the Forest Root is down from when he used it earlier. The Hammerstone stuns two heroes right there. The Keg Stun only gets one, though. Keeper might be in a lot of trouble here. He will fall. And uh, so the DS and Cthulhu Font are trying to run away here. I think they might be okay. Hammerstone has... One more stun up in two seconds. He did use his Galvanize. He still has enough mana, but that stun coming out from Cthulhu Font is able to keep the distance. And the slow there from uh, Aluna actually helped uh, slow Hammerstorm as well. So I actually think he could have got that stun off had Aluna not used that E spell. So yeah. good job by everyone played there. Unfortunately, that Keeper goes down, but sometimes you have casualties on yeah. Casual List. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, that was definitely a case I also think of maybe, maybe Quap getting a little bit too confident there. Obviously, it's still very early on in the game, pushing that top secondary tower and the three of them roaming around in the jungle together. So um, that was just good response from Call of Karma, you can say. The, all five of them now grouped up here in the middle lane, but we do got Keeper the Forest porting back in. Draconis is here as well. So we got some mid wars action now going on between Call of Karma and Co-op. We'll see if anyone actually initiates here or if it's just going to be a good old fashioned standoff between the two. And it looks like it is going to be the latter for now as both teams kind of falling back. At least Draconis going over here. Draconis, by the way, he, he just straight up maxed out W and Z. He didn't even touch his uh, Q ability with the Dragon Breath or Dragon Flame, excuse me, until right now when he hit level 9. There he goes with the ultimate as well, so... But I did find that that a little bit interesting. Oh, so he didn't get it at all? Until yeah, no, he didn't get it at all. He just W'd and e the whole way. Until at level 8, he was 4 and 4. Wow. And then he got Q. I don't yeah, know about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I noticed that way we were talking about his farm. But anyways, Cthulhu Vought trying to get here with the trail. Bobble's in a lot of trouble. We'll go down. The root's going to be used. It gets a couple of heroes in the background. And now this tower dropping quickly. Silhouette does board in, but you see just how tanky they are. Cthulhu Fun has 30 armor right now. With Nature's Veil, with Dimension Shot, I mean, it's just so ridiculous. Silhouette is going to be chased down. They get the tower kill. She was going for the deny, but I want Kostra right here. They're able to tree grapple away, so it's going to be fine for now. And will survive in the end. But again, just so tanky. We t that, didn't, that didn't even hit me, but yeah, they got this Nature's Veil, which is level 4, passing around 12 armor <laughs> to everyone on the team as well. I know, Cthulhu Fun, about 30 armor, as you said. Uh, when he pops those plated greaves, it's, it's going to be just there over um, 30 armor. So yeah, he is so damn tanky. He does actually go that Hell in the Black Legion um, route. Now he's making me look stupid. But uh, I honestly don't even think he needs it. Uh, I'm he should actually buy investments if I was him. Um, majority of the match uh, of the damage coming out from the uh, Hellborn side is actually magic right now, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm sure he'll pick one up once he gets a 400 gold here. Please prove me right, <laughs> Uncle Chicken. I you already proved good. me wrong once. Don't want to look good. Yeah, uh, that w that would make sense. I mean, granted, there's you know you still got a hammer storm and you got a silhouette obviously, and eventually Andromeda I'm gonna start assisting with that physical damage with the Aurora debuff. But uh, yeah, you're right. Obviously, early on, still worth very worth the mystic vessel against very very uh, cost effective. They're gonna jump right here with the Song of the Sea, but Cthulhu Vaughn just walks away as if nothing even happened. The keg's not gonna miss. And yeah, it don't matter. Now, Bubbles did have a Kelp Field, but they did choose not to really go full initiation right there. They do deny the tower, though, so that's the good news. But again, the bad news is they're now down three towers, and they've yet to really even apply pressure, let alone kill any towers themselves. I mean, <laughs> I'm looking around right now. The middle tower is the only one that's even taken slight damage. The bottom and top has pretty much been untouched here. 
in favor of the Legion team. So, yeah, 15 really, 15 and a half minutes in now. Again, Co-op looking very, very good. 9,000 gold lead, 7,000 experience lead. We talked about Draconis. You know, well, it didn't have the greatest start this game, but he is starting to pick up. And, again, this this is one of the – it's hard to argue against. He's one of the best farmers in the game. And once he starts getting a roll, he will just start taking over. I will say that the jungle stacking and the ancient stacking hasn't necessarily been the greatest, so I think that has a little bit to do with it as well. Uh, Bubbles is going to be caught out here, though. Draconis going to run into him. Is he going to Q and push him back? No, nice take cover. And Bubbles should be fine for now. Going to be Emerald Lightning. Keg Stun comes out, though. Or Storm Stun comes out, though. And Bubbles will be fine in the end. But, yeah, so maybe not the most efficient farm here for Draconis because of uh, the lack of ultimate stacking, but... Um, still starting to pick it up now. They stacked the ancient camps, I think, once. Um, and the, the rest of the stacking, I think, has really been done by Draconis himself. So uh, he's working his way towards that null stone, I believe. I would not. I don't think we're going to see a rune cleaver on him yet today. <laughs> uh, but that sure would be funny. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something. Oh, you you mentioned the Kelfield bottom when they had all five heroes there. They could have done that onto Cthulhu here. The thing is, though, is with that Kelfield stun at level one only being 1.5 seconds. Mm -hmm. The time actually Repugnance gets taken out there. I'm missing some action there. TP's coming out from Cthulhu Font. Kelp used, uh, Kelpfield used on to Ben Shaman there, but Ch Keeper of the Forest uses ultimate. And then finally, Uncle Chicken gets the last hit onto Alma, and uh, he will go down. So Alma now 1 3 and 1. Unfortunate for him, but Uncle Chicken, look at him. He's 8 0 and 4. About 400 gold per minute. He is just kind of crushing this game. Yeah. Um, and there he goes with that Steam Staff there. So, yes, he, he's, he's gonna still right. going to. Yeah, right. <laughs> just not in the nick of time. Nah, just, um, just one step further. Yeah. You're talking about Kalefield, though, with the 1.5 seconds. Yeah, if, if you're Cthulhu Font and you get in the very edge of that ulti and then charge out, yeah. by the time your charge is actually finished, like completed, you're only stunned for maybe 0.25 seconds. So yeah. um, it's actually quite a good ability uh, against that Kalefield. Yeah, that makes sense. So similar to something like a Kraken charge or yeah, something like that where you could just charge away. So sure, you'll take the stun, but you'll be so far away that it really won't matter in the end. So yeah, very good point to bring up, bring up there. Uh, nice counter warning going on here at the bottom lane. You see uh, that that's Natsuko. I hope I pronounced that right. Natsuko playing the Demented Shaman and doing some work there. Portal Key Hammerstorm, I believe he used it in the earlier gank in the middle lane as well. Another look at Cthulhu Fun. How tanky are you, Cthulhu Fun? Uh, apparently you're not tanky enough, or are you the trample away? No, you're not. In came Demented Shaman at the last second. Wouldn't that have been great? If he actually survived. But the Hellborn team comes through. Quap, the raid boss is down. And they could be happy with that. So gonna stall him from picking up that Insanitarius as soon as possible. There goes the Soul's Bulwark purchase on Keeper the Forest, by the way. Uh, so he eventually gets that picked up. But again, just having it nonetheless, whether it's on him or Cthulhu Fun, it's very, very effective. Top lane, Aluna's chasing the silhouette. It's just a solo Aluna. And is she really gonna kill level 10 silhouette? There's a juke right there with the ultimate going with the illusion, but the power throw snipe from Repugnance gets the kill. <laughs> She will sacrifice her own life, but I will say I think that's worth it right there. Oh, yeah, obviously. That's a very good pick up, pick off there by Repugnance. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to say about Cthulhu Font there when he died in mid, he did end up taking a lot more damage than I think we thought. Um, but a lot of that is I really think he should still buy Mystic Vestments. I mean, you do have Andromeda, Hammer, and Silhouette on the team, but like I said, most of the yeah. damage you're taking right now in the stage of the game is actually magical damage. Uh, probably, I mean, it's Bubbles. He's all magic damage. Uh, Andromeda stun, despite uh, he does have the Aurora, which helps with for physical damage. The stun still does a lot of magic damage. Yeah. All of Engineer spells are lots of it, magic it's, it's damage. It's almost as if people forget sometimes. Yeah. I think this is almost one of those cases. It's like because he he has 768 gold right now. He's right near a side shop. Like he could just literally spend five seconds, go over here, pick it up, then go back in the lane even. But yeah. it's just for whatever reason. Yeah, I I, I don't well, I don't I don't get it a whole lot. Of time. I think it's just the scare factor of. Well, look at how much how much physical damage they're gonna ha like they're gonna have, but yeah. yeah, they don't really have it yet. Like silhouette's not gonna be that impactful in team fights for physical TPS yet. Hammerstorm is still not gonna have that big of a uh, team or impact in team fights with his physical damage yet. Mm -hmm. So um, majority of the damage is gonna be coming out from magical damage. And actually, if you look at the hero damage, the top in the game is Bubbles. He's not a he's not a physical damage dealer. He's all magic damage. Uh, Hammerstorm doing a lot of damage with him, himself. The stun still does magic damage, but um, he's just doing he having a pretty good game. And then the next person under him is uh, Engineer. So yeah, I, I still think vestments would mitigate a lot of damage here, and it's nothing to be scoffed at. Like it's only 400 gold, so it's a very very small, strong pickup. Now of course I'm nitpicking. Um, Klopp is up 10k gold, eight, <laughs> you know eight, almost 9k experience. So um, they're definitely. You know, doing really, really well this game, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a thing that does matter. 
And uh, I actually really, really think he would have lived there in the mid if he you're, had you're right. missed, I, missed investments. I, I agree. I mean, having the missed investments, he figured how close. I mean, he was literally half a second from surviving because Demento Chama was right there. And you've got to figure out Mystic Vespins would have done more than enough for that. So uh, here, though, in the middle lane, there was a little bit of back and forth that Kegstone was used, but no uh, full on initiation. I believe in Sanitarius was finished as well as Noel Stone, which is on Draconis. So uh, the Courier is sitting back here currently. He actually needs some micro it still, <laughs> unfortunately. Just kind of chilling at that tower. There it's going. So Cthulhu Fall will have his in Sanitarius. They got the Noel Stone. They got the Soul's Bulwark. So these big uh, early game items being picked up now. And it's no surprise to see Quap grouping up and making a mass push. The minions come out. In comes Hammer. He says, I'm going to go first, guys. And he jumps out into Waluna. Gets her killed. For those defensive Shaman, excuse me, gets killed right off the bat. You go Engineer. Put his ultimate off. Silhouette able to pour out in time. Going to survive for now. Cthulhu Fall in the midst of it all. You got to keep it the force. Root is already down. Two players are dead. Engineer and Hammerstorm on the Hellborn side. Make oh. that three. Maybe Oh, the trample misses. It ain't going to matter, though. Dumpster Tom had an insult injury right there. Gets a double tap for Paracletos there. Playing the Draconis. And they're also going to get the tower kills. So very well played by Quap in the end. They do come out 3-1 to one in hero kills as well as the tower kill. And that gold advantage now up to 14,000 gold lead. Nearly an 11,000 experience lead. And again, uh, oh, so really good timing push right there too as well from Quab. You know, they got these good early game items and grouped up and made a very difficult push to stop there for C1K. Yeah, and th that was just absolute perfect initiation there by Hammer. And really, really good follow-up from Bubbles, but no one else on the team did anything. Like, mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, following up with that initiation, it was a perfect stun. They had the, the right idea going on to Ben and Shaman. That is the hero you really need to go on. He also caught uh, Draconis in his stun as well with the AoE effect. Uh, and actually, some uh, stun might be coming up. Draconis uses Q to kind of push him back. They are they are in retreat mode. Hammerstone comes out on Aluna, and I'm pretty sure Aluna will die. Bubbles comes in with a silence on Cthulhu. He kind of sits back a little bit too far, uh, but now they're pursuing Draconis. He's doing so much damage, but no, he actually takes so much damage too. Cthulhu charging back in, maybe looking for that kill engineer. Dodges some stuns, but oh no, Cthulhu is going to die as well. Oh, he oh, uses that in at the right time, but too late, uh, took too much damage. Uh, pursuing a silhouette is that keeper right there, but I don't know if he's going to get him. If he keeps those trees on him, he actually gains some movement speed from his passive. Yeah. It is level 2. Can he get him? I don't know. It's actually going to be mm -hmm. kind of close here. But uh, grapple in 1. Yeah, he's not going to get him. Yeah. He's going to be fine. Be careful. Don't get killed by the dogs here. That would be something. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was really close. And a big keeper of the force. Wow, they're going to complete a genocide. Yeah, that that uh, obviously not officially a genocide, but it was. I mean, they killed a whole five there in the end. That actually, uh, well, that finished very well there for C1K, and I think. Uh, oh, power oh, throw! Oh, well, that almost was like a triple kill. Quil kill right that there. would have been something. It did kill Engineer, but <laughs> <laughs> that was really close to also killing Silhouette. Wouldn't that have been great, um, right it's there? But yeah, as well as the bubbles was very low himself. He did yeah. not auto cast his uh, take cover. Oops. So, um, but how about that? Though? Yeah. I mean, oh, wow. It's uh, Obviously, we got still a lead here for Quap. A pretty good lead still, but they, they made some poor decisions there that had a lot more deaths happen than needed to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you said it perfectly. They they didn't need to have those deaths at all. Uh, they kind of fed one by one. and But at the same time, I, was, I looked. I was like, oh, my God, they're, they're coming back. Or, uh, C1K is coming back, but still a 12K gold lead. Um, and then, a, you know, a smaller experience lead, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. But you really got to attribute the gold lead to, they only have one outer tower left, whereas not a single tower has been killed by C1K. So, initiation coming out on the Hammerstorm. Good swap and stun right after that by I'm Not Carry. <laughs> Funny <laughs> name there. Uh, there's I'm Carry and then I'm uh, Not yeah. Carry. But, uh, yeah. go figure. One's playing, uh... And Dramana, the other one's playing Silhouette, so... They should have done the other way, though. That would have been... That would have... Now that would have been humorous, too. Yeah. You, you know you know how to do the humor trough. I agree with you there, so... This ward spot by Congor, by the way, has been extremely popular in the last two days. Mm -hmm. I think Orange warded that the, enti like the entire game, and uh, I, just, I keep seeing that ward come out. It's kind of funny. Does it actually give you, like, full vision of Congor? I don't think it would. Of Congor, no. no I, mean, but you can, I mean, obviously, you can see so. above it. Yeah. And uh, I actually don't even know if that... I, Oh, I just got to give vision to that rune there. I would think so. I, I don't know. That is very close, yeah. I don't know. I wish I could see from their point of view, but... I I mean, from what I can see... Yeah, that is tough to say. It would be very, very close if it does. But anyways, we see the bottom tower. It is going to start dropping right here. Uh, this is the last outer tower, actually. Uh, we got an invisible Draconis, obviously, sitting off to the side as well. So the Hellborn team just playing this very, very passive. Silhouette is pushing the middle lane in the meantime. But this tower is going to fall. Will it be denied? Going to be close. Bubbles. Nope. Captain America Bubbles can knock up there. Give it the force. Portal key root. And he's going to do a lot of damage right here for the rest of that team. Nice red Alunison as well. Out comes the Engineer Energy Field right there. 
Silhouette still has not joined the party. We do see a death on a Hammerstorm happening. Silhouette is finally here, but again, the damage has already been done. So that Portal Key Keeper of the Forest, that's going to be a deadly initiation tool that uh, that uh, C1K will have to deal with now, as we saw right there. They do get a tower kill in the middle lane, but their base is now being pushed in. And with Hammerstorm, oh no, he does buy back. So they're going to give this a go right here. Will the Legion team realize this in time? Yeah, they need to be a little bit careful. Uh, they're going to fall back. Bubbles, he's not going to shell surf, so that'll be the end of that fight. But they got the kill, they applied a little bit more pressure, and they get the last outer tower down. So well played again by Quap there. Yeah, uh, Quap just has such a great team fight team. Team fight and push slash farm. I mean, Draconis can farm faster than anybody. He's 400 gold per minute, and he, we, we haven't even really seen him do anything. I mean, yeah. Uncle Chicken, who's 9, 2, and 7, he's had 16 kills of team involvement. 16 <laughs> out of 19. Yeah. And he's still at 360 gold per minute. Uh, but just look at the CS. That really <laughs> shows you the what's going on here. 162 Jeez. coming out for Jaconis, So that that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if we're only 25. We're coming up 26 minutes here now. But it's pretty damn. You know, good. Get, getting 50 50 creep kills every 10 minutes is usually considered like a pretty pretty solid farm. Um, at least I would think. So you of course 100 every 20. The fact that he has 162, yeah, at 25. It's again, he's he's uh, definitely above average there. So yeah, um, and sometimes CS is always. Um, it's skewed a bit because, yeah. you know, if you kill Snodders, obviously those are not equal to killing mm -hmm. uh, lane creeps. So it's, it's always a little bit skewed, but still, he, he's farming very well, despite having kind of little to no team involvement in this game. I mean, you compare three kills involved compared to 16 from Cthulhu Font. So Cthulhu Font's doing a great job here by roaming around. As well as the Demented Shaman, I've been watching him specifically, and he's been playing, I mean, and really this whole entire cast here. Um, they, they have a, despite that whole string of deaths that happened in the top jungle of C1Ks, um, they have a really smart draft and they're they're playing it, they're executing it well. So yeah, again, this started with if you are just tuning in, if you are tuning in later on here in game number one uh, between Coop and C1K. Of course, this is a best of the three series. Now, unfortunately, nothing really on the line here as far as advancing on in the uh, tournament due to the, both these teams having a two and three record and at this point pretty much being knocked out for the most part. Uh, but still, you know, playing playing for pride really. They are in Hong Kong, you know, that's definitely something to play for as well, especially teams that don't get the chance to you know be streamed in front of the thousands of viewers that are watching. So, um, but as I was saying, Keeper of the Forest though was actually. Actually, uh, he was not jungling. He actually laned one versus one at the bottom lane against yeah. the Bubbles, and he did a very good job. He even got a kill early on on the Bubbles. So Casualis, yeah, deserves a lot of credit here uh, for, and as does Quap as a whole for playing, you know, a very unique strategy there, very, very um, creative strategy. Even again, using the solo keep of the force, but definitely worked out very effectively. And yeah, so as a team, though, they are looking really good. Now, again, I will say, call it karma by no means out of it. They do have a silhouette who's who's recovering. I mean, she's she's had a really struggling game. Uh, you see right now she is at 251 gold per minute. She has passed the uh, 100 creep kill mark, so again, that's good. She has recovered, but um, still has uh, quite a ways to go. Now, she does pick up a Mighty Blade first, mm -hmm. so not going to be going your, I almost want to say, usual Null Stone into uh, whatever else, Portal Key. Going the Shrunken Head route, Ralph. You, uh, you like that? Uh, yeah, she definitely has my seal of approval. <laughs> um Especially the Keeper for Keeper of the Forest ultimate. you got to have a way to get out of that. I will say, though, she can just use her ultimate. Uh, you can She can use her illusion spell. Is that what it's called? I think illusion, shadow. She can use her ultimate, what's called shadow, to get out of the keep of the forest ultimate. So you don't have to necessarily use your shrunken. The only problem with that is nine times out of ten, before a silhouette actually goes into a fight, she uses her ultimate so that she can port back to it if she gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. So, um, so shrunken head's good in that regard to have. Uh, it ready to get out of that Keeper of the Forest ultimate. Yeah. It's also just a perfect pickup against all this magic damage that's coming out, specifically from Cthulhu and uh, uh, Draconis. They're doing so much magic damage. But, I mean, it, while she does have my seal of approval, it is the right item to go. It's just simply not going to be enough. I mean, farming 250 gold per minute against this team, the auto attacks alone from Draconis eventually are going to just cut you down. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you put on top of that the Storm Cloud. Once that gets to level 2, to manage almost, almost level 11. So with that level two storm cloud, it's just gonna you know lower your armor so much. The auto attacks are really gonna start to kick in. So even a shrunken head is not going to be enough. It is the right build, but um, she just needs to get some more farm. Yeah, exactly. It's just uh, just because it's right doesn't mean it's gonna be. Oh my god, everything's gonna come back and be fine. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, definitely still behind. Uh, when it comes to that farm, like we were saying, we had a really struggling early game. So apparently the Hellborn team is ready, and uh, C1K just waiting for SBT, also known as Quap. And there we go. It looks like so. 
Uh, right, we're going to now resume in here. I don't think any fights are really going to be happening right here. You see uh, Engineer is actually chasing quite a bit. But Engineer, he's got some pretty nice energy fields. We talked about that ability. And, of course, how powerful that is. And so in these team fights, and it's definitely a good tool against them. But you also mentioned how it's kind of frustrating at times seeing that if just everyone attacks that energy field, yeah. gets it down right away, just one auto attack even from everyone. Then I won't have to deal with it for long, but it seems like it's had full durations in these fights. Um, she has picked up a level one in the spider mines. Now seeing that she is level ten, so I want to. I'm curious if we start seeing maybe that placed around. I don't know if you can see on the mini map. Doesn't look like any have been placed around just yet, but also just anything in team fights, just to use it. You know, while you're in a team fight, that's free. I believe it's 150 magic damage to level one, uh, an AOE radius even. So you just good counter warding going on as well right there. So. Hammerstorm, he's also had a pretty solid game, 277 gold per minute. He is not leading the way. Actually, Bubbles is leading the way to Arcana. So he's actually pretty close to Hellfire now. And that's uh, Did he just finish it? There you go, right on cue. So uh, Bubbles being played by Alme here. Now is a Hellfire. So get the Hellfire, get the couple of shrunken heads. You know, may maybe you can try to make something happen here. We'll see. Yeah, that's a, that's a great pickup. But you know, now I'm looking at Draconis and seeing what they can... <laughs> How they respond, and it's with triple stack ancients dying in 15 seconds. <laughs> uh, if even that. That was so. at least 17 and a half, Trav. Oh, pfft. sue me. I don't know. This hero just farms so quickly, and uh, I mean, there's a reason why Quap first picked him. Yeah, right away. Um, yeah, so they're going to have a hard time. That portal key, won't, I didn't realize it at first. So I'm before we first saw uh, Keeper of the Forest jump in, that's a great initiation tool. That's exactly what they need. They kind of lack initiation with this lineup. So uh, I really, really like the timing of that portal key by uh, Casualist. Smart pickup. Uh, what else has Cthulhu Font done? He's got he's finished that in Sanitarius. Now a Mighty Blade uh, picked up on himself. So uh, I don't know what that's going to be. I think a Shrunken Head would not necessarily be the, the best thing. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, I lied. There's an Engineer and yeah. Bubbles. <laughs> it's the best thing. <laughs> uh, so that's smart. It's just one of those things you don't think about building on a hero that's already so tanky, but yeah. it's still a, the good decision. Yeah. So um, hopefully we'll see him pick that up. Demented Shaman has a lot of uh, gold pulled up, actually, himself. 2,200. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, uh, maybe we'll see a Storm Spirit or something picked up on him. I wonder if he's been buying most of the wards that Luna has. I mean, both are actually having very good farm. 235 on Demented Shaman and 214 gold for me on Luna. So, yeah, both have been doing very well. Maybe they've been just sharing that role. Uh, of course, when Luna does have a bound die. I think she's had that for a little bit now. Uh, but they, that, of course, helps you get map control. Very effective. At the top lane, you see Cube of the Force port again doing some damage right there. Meanwhile, though, a jump on a Demented Shaman. <laughs> In comes a comma stun from I'm Not Carry playing the Andromeda to get the kills. Uh, started, though, by Hammerstorm. Now, Cthulhu Font actually in the front lines, but he's going to fall back Rejected. before too much pressure happens right there. Andromeda thought about swapping, but. Um, they just uh, could not get a range. Top tower is denied by Keeper of the Forest, so well played on his part. But yeah, Demented Shaman, she, with that death, obviously losing a little bit of gold, but 2,000 gold nearly saved up, so you got to wonder a little bit what they're saving for. Maybe something like a tablet, but as you talk about with a, well, both an engineer and a Bubbles for that matter, not maybe the most effective. Keeper of the Forest, though, coming in right here. Bubbles in a lot of trouble, and Bubbles, oh, cannot use the take cover to port out in time. Will go down. So good jump right there. Keep the force reused. And as you mentioned, that's a great initiation tool for this team. Using it several times now to get some kills here and there. Yeah, I saw him just following. And the stun came out from Uncle Chicken on Bubbles. And he predicted where Bubbles was going to go to port to that Cell Surf. Saw the other hero um, in range as well. I, I forget who was also in that. But um, yeah, really, really good jump there by Casualist. Perfect timing from him to get that ultimate off. It was really, really well done. Now they're going to do a Congor attempt huh. here. They did counter ward. Uh, so I'm pretty sure uh, C1K knows, but um, they don't have the most damage in the world until they get this uh, Keeper of the Forest to maybe make some trees. He did mm -hmm. actually make them, and he's going to use them offensively against um, C1K. So mm, I think it's smart. Maybe you only need like one or two to just scout because, look, at these are going to die pretty quickly. But yeah. um, they are falling back from Congo. Like I said, they can't really kill it that quickly. But uh, maybe they'll just try to t team fight. Now, keep well, the forest route is down, so we'll see. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a pretty dangerous summer but they're going to still go in. Boss the wall right here. Hammer's running the front lines. J was trying to do something, but he cannot. Draconis, the golden dragon, cool. is just way too powerful in the background. Takes an Andromeda. Gets uh, a couple of kills right there. Silhouette going to be able to pour it out in time with the shadow ability, but again, the damage already... Oh! Hammerstorm buys back, but what a double tap snipe right there. <laughs> Takes out both... And well, actually, no, got the kill onto Engineer right there, but yeah, so finish the double tap. Great snipe from Aluna, and they're going to go back and most likely finish off Congor now, so... That's uh, grim news here for C1K, if I've ever seen it. Uh, Co-op looking to be in a pretty comfortable spot now. 
And with a token of life on top of this, and again, we saw the power of Draconis that last fight, especially too. It's just that's what he does. <laughs> he presses R, activates his strength and head, and they were just falling apart. That was also a good job, though, by Quap. You know, jumping in first. Bobbles comes in. Oh, he can't steal it. He will do initiation, though, but what's the point? <laughs> Hammerstorm's going to fall. I don't know about that. Yeah, one. that was silly. I mean. I think they're just kind of frustrated right now. Bubbles didn't have any uh, item slots even available to do that. Yeah. If he was going to try that, maybe sell your TP and try to get the snipe that way. But also the Hammerstorm jump, that was just really late and t completely unnecessary. So, uh, well, they got a free kill out of that. And they're most likely going to push mid and probably in this racks with Hammerstorm being dead for another 30 seconds. So, uh, that's unfortunate for C1K. Yeah, I mean, again, we, we talk about that all the time. It's just a case, even if he ninja the token... I mean, sure, that would be fun at all, but he would have died after most likely anyway, still. So he would have resurrected and died again. Uh, so it's a case of, is that really worth it in, in the end? But yeah, then Hammerstorm following that up, it's like, that was just that was just weird. That was just <laughs> pretty weird from C1K. I mean, it really just didn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm um, kind of almost giving them a couple of kills right there. Why the hell not? And they got the token alive, just adding insult to injury on Draconis. So... Yeah, it's really the worst case scenario possible for Call of Karma. So they're going to hang in there for now, uh, try to make something happen. I mean, you do have that shrunken head on silhouette. I believe she didn't have it in the last fight. So, uh, But having it now, of course, going to be effective. I mean, Hammerstorm, you, you would hope that he would have been able to get it by now, but he's used already two of his buybacks. He used both of his buybacks. So wow, I didn't even realize yeah, that. Yeah, he used it in that last fight. I remember him using it earlier on as well. So he's still sitting on that mighty blade, and I believe he needs both the Warhammer in the pattern so he needs 2900 gold before he has that and even with that again it's a case of <laughs> is that's just that's just one step in many steps they need to take here it seems like for the hellborn team so dracon is just getting fatter and fatter here as far as items go frostfield plate i believe wow yeah i just purchased by keeper the forest so the armor stacking is just getting that's another crazy thing to, to note i mean so as the game advances on sure your silhouette your hammer storm gonna be hitting harder but it's going to be physical damage you're getting all this armor that's adding up here already with the nature's veil already with the storm cloud it's yeah i don't i don't see much hope here honestly for c1k but we'll see yeah i mean it's still the top damage dealer is bubbles and i mean you got silhouette at five percent and i mean she would be doing the damage here in the late in the late game but she's not farming anything uh, Bubbles is actually tied with her as far as gold goes, or GP goes. Now, she did have a hard lane there. Andro kind of left, as he should have. It should have been, like I said, it should have been either two things. They should have had Engineer or Hammer walk up top and do a tri lane against the dual lane. Or just abandon Silhouette, say, hope, you know, hope for the best. Hopefully you can farm something, maybe get some <laughs> levels. Because, you know, we're not really winning this dual lane versus dual lane. Mm -hmm. And then have Andro roam. And they did that, they did that one. And uh, I think it helped out, a, it was a little bit, but... A little bit okay, but Silhouette really doesn't have that much at all, and uh, she's not even at 300 gold per minute. Uh, you look at Draconis, almost 500. He spent something, and he did buy... What is this like a chicken here? He bought something with his always gold. Oh, he bought a full Geometer's main recipe, so <laughs> there you go. Have fun with that, C1K, because <laughs> that's going to hurt. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really going to hurt. It's going to hurt soon here, apparently, because uh, Quap is deciding that this is a time to make an aggressive push into the base. They're going to push this middle lane. Of course, the tree dogs are out. This tower is going to start dropping quickly. Now, Silhouette is pushing the top tower in the meantime, but yeah, she's porting out. Uh, taking some tower hits is a little bit unfortunate. It's going to do some regen, though, and then we'll be able to join the party. So they're going to lose this tower. Will they be able to save the racks? That was the question. I mean, they really just need to at this point, so they're going to have to take a big risk right here. Now, they do use invulnerability at the last second action, but here we go. Hammerstorm jumps in. Bubbles to follow. Is it going to be enough follow-up? No, it's not. Storm's going to be used. And there's Jack Cronus pushing hard. Oh, my God. So much damage is happening between everyone. The Obliterate, the Keeper Root, the Draconis Ultimate. And everyone just gets obliterated on the Hellborn side. We see the melee racks is going to fall. Buybacks are happening, but it's just too much damage. GG well plates are being called, and it looks like it's going to be official here coming up at least as uh, uh, Quap should be able to take game one. It's not 100% over just yet. We're still waiting for the official concede, but uh, Bubbles will die there in the back end. So there we go. It is going to be official, and Quap will take game one over C1K in this best of the three. So... Again, uh, Draconis, man, snap, snap picking him right off the bat. But you got to also give them credit for it. It's not like they just built a lineup around Draconis and just had him farm and, you know, carry the rest of the game. It's Keeper of the Forest did very, very well. Cthulhu Font did amazing at the top lane. So, honestly, just great overall play actually coming out from Quap there. Yeah, I mean, I, I really think in that game specifically, you can substitute any kind of uh, hero there with Draconis instead. Um, 
most of the time he spent this game was farming, honestly. I mean, we gave him a lot of credit. He did well. He actually had the highest uh, hero damage in the game, I think 17%, well over uh, Cthulhuphon, who was at like 11% or something like that. Yeah. But that game was really won by the, the constant roaming and just good team play from the other four heroes. And we saw Keeper Forest won his lane quite handily. He even killed Bubbles at that. That's, that's one thing that's like a step further. Um, you know, it's one thing to get a lot of CS with a hatchet, but it's another thing to completely kill the, uh, someone with a solo keeper. Mm -hmm. And then D Disham Cthulhu in the top lane just did so well. They did such a good job. Great roaming and great snipes there from Repugnus. That was a lot of fun to watch. So, um, you know, like I said, I really think any kind of hero could have played the role as Draconis, but, you know, that hero still farms a ton. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely something there from Quap again. A very very good team effort though, and like I said, WZA was uh, hyping up this team going into it. I was intrigued to see what they were about, and for a pretty solid team here, I must say. It was, it was actually pretty fun watching them. Now, as far as Call of Karma goes, also another team that you know we've talked about in the past being a pretty solid team themselves, but unfortunately uh, they uh, were not successful as far as uh, this game goes here. But again, it is a best of the three, so we'll see what happens here in the series. Now, on that note, real quickly, guys. Uh, apparently, we are going to have to restart the stream, actually. Unfortunately, we uh, we realized it wasn't set up for 1080p for this. Uh, we, we had an issue there. We're going to restart it. It'll come back, though. It'll be 1080p. It should just be a quick couple of seconds here. Uh, just go ahead and refresh. Or you may, I don't even think you have to, actually. Twitch just does it for you. So sit tight, go. <laughs> sit tight, though, guys. We'll be right back with game number two after this restart. Stay tuned.